For gypsies and travelers, a clean family name is crucial, and the consequences of losing it can be devastating. A man could give you a dirty name just like that. A boy can just physically turn around and say, I had her, she's dirty. That stops you from having a clean name. And when you get older and want to get married, no one would have you, no one would want you. The rules of courtship in the traveller community are exceptionally strict, and breaking them can destroy a girl's reputation. But they are something 17-year-old Irish traveller Roseanne has used to her advantage. These are all presents, like, there's nothing in them, they're just all wrapped up. They put in the, um, in the hotel, just like another table, just to make it look great more. Because her parents didn't want her to marry so young, Roseanne and her boyfriend deliberately caused a scandal. They ran away and spent a night together, something that caused outrage in the traveller community. Why do you end up getting engaged? Why well, I got engaged so quickly? Um, because I ran off, didn't I? Yeah. Because if we went on and asked properly, the wedding probably wouldn't be like till next year. I wanted to get married quicker than him, um, quicker than that, and him he did. So, far away, we were only gone like a few hours. The very next day we came back, I got afraid. Oh, there's the bridesmaid's hat. That had the spray in pink. To save her reputation, Roseanne will be getting married in a week's time. But her ploy to persuade her parents to rush the wedding forward wasn't without its dangers. I took like a big, huge, massive risk doing it. Because a lot of girls runs away and they get dropped back home. And then that's said, no young play, no boy or anyone would go near him again. Why is that? Because things there's something wrong with the girl. Like that. Even to be innocent and everything, they think there's something going on with them. And then that's the girl's life ruined then. It's your mum forgiving you now. Yeah, but I don't think I'll ever leave it down. Even I'm an old woman and everything. I don't think, do you remember what you done to me and the stress and the worry and the panic and this and that and the other thing that you put me through? Do you want to get a hairbrush and a fix your hair? And did you ring the boys and ask them about the suits and that? 26-year-old Irish traveller Priscilla was also brought up to follow strict rules. But since then, she's run away to get married, had a divorce, is unmarried with four children and is now planning her second marriage to boyfriend Clive. You make a nice job, girls. Is mum and daddy getting married? Yeah. Are we? Yeah. She's got ambitious plans for her second wedding. Another colour team there wears purple. She's putting like a hot pink all over the roof, all over the ground, and she said that she might be able to come across like a glass flooring. Like, like, like as if it's on ice, as if you're walking on ice, like a frost floor. And I'm trying to get there, like an, like an owl, to come um, from a distance. And I want to, like the two of us there, looking out onto the ocean, like in the kind of in the before it comes night time. And I asked her to get the owl to come between the two of us with the wedding bands. So are you looking forward? <coughs> yeah. Priscilla was just 16 when she ran away to be married for the first time, but it was her subsequent divorce that brought a bigger scandal. My family was like, shame on you, Priscilla. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're making a disgrace to your family. Look what you've done to us. My father came over to me and cornered me in the kitchen and looked at me and stuck his finger in my face and said, you should be ashamed of yourself, and he said, you dirty the man and wife is meant to stay with each other for eternity because there's not many travelling women that gets married and gets divorced. And even though all I wanted was to get rid of my ex-husband, my whole family went too. Three solid years of stopped speaking to me over it. Despite her ruined reputation in the eyes of the community, Priscilla is once again going against convention by marrying Clive, a non-traveller. Getting tattooed on as a wedding present. Neil, I'm gonna hurt you. I know it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> like, I didn't think that me and Priscilla would end up together, like, over our family and that. But she picked me over our family. And that was, that was, no one ever done that like that for me before.
She gave up everything for me. Everything. So I knew then she was the one for me and she knew I was the one for her. Red coat and a feather, feather and red black skirt. Most shocking of all to the traveller community is that Priscilla's two children with Clive were born out of wedlock. But there are some traditions Priscilla does abide by, and today she's christening their latest addition. This is just literally a party for me to have never be pregnant again and to have a free womb. And it's a big day for baby boy Rico. I didn't want any more bitches. No, because then I'm calling them. <laughs> calling them bitches. So that all who are baptised in it may be washed clean of sin and be born again to live as your children. I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. After Priscilla's day in church, it's time for the christening party. I wanted kind of something different from what I wore today because I was letting on to be little Virgin Mary today in front of the priest. So this is something that I wear after 12 o'clock. <laughs> what do your kids think when they see you all dressed up? I let them on and going to work. <laughs> what do you think they think you do for a job? Um, I don't know. I don't think I should ask him that. <laughs> I'm not looking at me like this anyways. <laughs> Despite Priscilla's unconventional approach to travel a life, her decision to remarry has brought her back into the community and healed old wounds with her dad. Yeah. This is the only daddy that put up me all my life. <laughs> Your daughter Priscilla, mighty proud of her for the decisions that she finally made. And yeah. this is uh, very proud of him as well. Uh, uh, lucky are you, Clive? Very, very lucky. And she knows that. I pray for a woman like that all my life. No, he knows that. That's the most important thing. He knows that. It's right. me, the most ambuka does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> traveller family's reputation can be ruined if their daughter's behaviour is considered unclean. One, two, three, four, five, six. But after Irish traveller Roseanne ran away and spent a night with her fiancé, the suspicion of intimacy hangs over them and it's vital they get married as soon as possible. Where's your bride me from? The wedding is in four days' time, but with the strict rule of no sex before marriage, Roseanne and her fiancé are being chaperoned by five of her brothers and sisters. What happened when she ran away? She ran, uh, um, I don't know, she just got up in the middle of the night and she ran away. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, I, just, I just heard she just ran away and that's it. Because she loves us so much, she wanted to be with us straight away. And I wanted to be, uh, wanted to wait in the summertime. But it's all right, though. It's doing well. It is. It's making me sick now, talking about it. Roseanne's fiancé has asked not to be identified. Are you looking forward to getting married? He tells me every night on the phone how much he can't wait to get married. No, I'm not! <laughs> <laughs> I really don't! Yeah, you do! No, I don't! Can't Just give it to me! <laughs> With the wedding rushed forward to avoid a scandal, there has been precious little time for Roseanne's mum, Bridget, to plan the big day. Well, I'm finished front me, now, so hopefully that should be enough. Not a time to do all the back, <laughs> but we'll get that done. If you want any more diamantes on your lap, No way, that's know. plenty, that is. Yeah, I thought that, because you've got them there, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> shall I try it on it? Yeah, we'll get you it on. OK. There we go. Ta-da! Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah. A daughter's wedding is one of the proudest days in any traveller's life. 
Say, look, I can walk, I can do this. <laughs> you can dance. But for Bridget, it's come earlier than she would have wanted. Okay. That's lovely. What do you think, Bridget? I think it's lovely. It's what she wanted. Very sad. Are you going to be very happy to see your daughter walk down the aisle? Just always <coughs> been treated like a baby. Were you having on my dress? Bye, God bless. Bye, bye, bye. we love you. You look forward to wedding, lads. I don't know if I should marry him or not now. I don't know either. <laughs> The wedding of divorced Irish traveller Priscilla and her second husband Clive is planned for six weeks' time. It's a wide one. Would it be corset or filled with diamonds? You'd literally stand it on top of the table. It's that nice. It stands out. Yeah. But before she does, she's got one more scandal up her sleeve. My plan is to get, go over to Poland, um, get um, breast enlargements, and get a tummy tuck done that I waited my whole life for. Because um, I'm actually able to do it, and Clive, he's allowing me to do it, it's more of a privilege. But if he didn't allow me, I'd go anyways, without a doubt. I'd like to say to other travelling girls, look what I can do, you can do the same. And they'll be saying, how can you travel so far on your own? And I'm saying, you can do it. <laughs> It may not be the done thing for traveller women to have breast enlargements, but this will be the second time Priscilla has had the procedure in Poland. Nice to meet you. Your breast before was maybe in this position, yeah, and then went down to this position. And you have this snoopy, I'll say. Yes, yeah, snoopy. The breast is hanging. Now, the, let's say this hanging position. That's just hanging. That's big breast and hanging. Would your parents' generation ever think of having plastic surgery? Oh, never. Never. I think if they grew two heads and t a tail, <laughs> I would form on the tail and hoofs, they still wouldn't. Having travelled over a thousand miles on her own, it's been 24 hours since Priscilla last saw Clive. He sent me a, t a text yesterday. I was saying, um, "You are the woman that I was dreaming about all my life. <laughs> when God made you, He was thinking about me. I miss you so much. It's killing me being away from my Silla." And I literally pour out in tears. Yeah, God, I didn't think He could actually read or even spell. <laughs> While some travellers are happy to move away from the traditional values of their culture, many still believe in fighting for their reputation. 52-year-old Irish traveller Paddy Doherty has spent a lifetime defending the honour of his family name. It's spreading your name. It's a heavy weight in your shoulders because you're Doherty. Or, 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 it's that Paddy Doherty over long number one crack at him. And then before you know it, you're fighting. And you don't want to fight, but you have to fight over your name. Having survived a number of attempts on his life, including a gunshot wound to the head, Paddy has invested in security cameras, which recently captured another attack on him, witnessed by his wife, Roseanne. I looked in the camera and I could see Paddy coming back. So what I did was... It was more over here. That trail was long ways. So I zoomed sort of into here. Although no one was ever found guilty, what Roseanne saw was Paddy and another man returning from a night in the pub. Without warning, Paddy is attacked from behind. And I watched exactly what he did. And in all my life, I could never, ever believe that anyone could do 
what I think, you know what I mean? He could have killed Paddy, he could have. Well, he, he left it for dead. After two days in hospital with serious facial injuries, Paddy's wounds healed, but the traveller code of fair fighting had been broken. Nothing was like face to face. Let's rock and roll, let's get it on, let's buck. Nothing was like that. Now, you wouldn't have to sneak up for me at half past four in the morning, drunk as a <laughs> Drunk as a lord, as one would say, you know what I mean? All you have to do is push me in that fall. So, you know, to get a medal, to say I, I, I done Paddy Daugherty, he never done me. It's not only that, it shows them for the coward that they are, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be cowardly to do a thing like, like that. that. You have to be petrified of afraid of me to do yeah. a thing like that. It shows that I am your governor. I am your governor. End of story. Following the attack on Paddy, the Doherty family aim to restore their honor, and a bare-knuckle fight has been arranged with a member of the rival family. But have you got no rest in there at all? What? For generations, the Doherty's have used this boxing gym in Salford. Yeah, that's my old man. Yeah. My brother's there. That's my son, Simon. It's Paddy's son, Simon, now 31, who's taken up the gauntlet of defending the family name. We're fighting for our father's honor. For letting people know you can't hit our father and get away with it. It's as simple as that. If you do, you've got to suffer the consequences, which is fight. We don't like weapons or anything like that. We've been made up to use these, and that's the best way to do it. And when it's over, it's over, and that's it. Get the problem dealt with. The fight is scheduled for two days' time. Have you always been a, a fighting person? No, never was, no. I'm always just a quiet person. I get some of my life. I'm a church goer, I believe in God, born again Christian. I try to do what I can the best way I can. But obviously some things have got to be dealt with. And I'm here to deal with the problem. The problem we dealt with on Wednesday. Like I said, there's no ways to no buts. I'm genuinely going to put them asleep in ten minutes. So you should say, there's an old saying, you should let sleeping dogs sleep. I'm awake now and I'm wild. For bride-to-be Roseanne, looking after the family honour means getting married. And in just two hours' time, she'll be heading down the aisle. So, are you looking forward to it then? Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Roseanne wanted to get married as soon as possible, but it's not a desire shared by her 12-year-old sister, Elizabeth. I don't want to get married. You have to look after a man. You have to cook clean and pet him to death. Yeah. It's not working for me. I have to get people to do that to me. Yeah. I'm rushing there. What time are you going to be at the church? One o'clock. What time is it now? It's about 12, nearly 12 o'clock. Oh, it really is really 12 o'clock. Give me coke, where's the coke, give me coke. Where's it been? It's in the bag, in the box. In the bag, in the box. In the box. Despite very little time to plan her big day, Roseanne's family have made sure the wedding will go ahead in true traveller style. Slowly, slowly. All Roseanne needs to do is get to the church on time. Oh, Bridgie, it's not going to end. I know, I know, it's not bad, I know. What do you think of the girls' dresses? Girls' dresses? They're good enough, you know what I mean? They'll do for you, Push yourself up. Don't be crying. Don't just run around my hair. Yeah, may undo it. No, don't undo it all. Ready? Have we done it? Yeah. We've done it. Hey. Come on. Thank you. Take, imagine trying to dance with these, like shifting a wardrobe. <laughs> Mum, hey, Daddy, all the heads. Uh, get out. Get out. The wedding may be a way to restore Roseanne's reputation, but for Mum, giving away her 17 year old daughter has brought mixed feelings. What do you think she looks like? She looks lovely. Are you afraid of her? I am very proud of child. Are you happy? No. I have to keep it for myself. Elizabeth? Yeah, 
Max. How are you feeling? Happy, excited, and happy. And a bit nervous too, don't forget that. <laughs> With the exchanging of vows, Roseanne is transformed into a respectable traveler's wife. I'm going to the zoo now. I'm just going to have a few doors. Hey, you see the lights? Hey, you see Her reputation intact, Roseanne can enjoy the traditional wedding she wanted. Family true. It's very bad. I don't, I wouldn't do it again. Has it been emotional? I think I cried out all my tears. I just hope the two of them be very happy. I love them both very much. They kind of grew on me. <laughs> it's strictly them. Then there against these two hands and that's that to him. Irish traveller Simon Doherty is on his way to an arranged bare-knuckle fight to protect the honour of his family name. This is our way now. This is, this is the traveller's way. This is back the old school, as they say. This is the way it's happening. This is going to happen as old as it can be. That's it. Two men, bump toe to toe and get the job on you. Ain't stripped to the waist. Let the best man win. The fight is to make amends for what his family believe was an unfair attack on his father, Paddy. That is my brother Charlie. So I'm being very confident. It's a worse time fighting anyone if you think you're going to lose. Don't even have that in your head. He's going to beat your man. But so is the other fellow think he's going to beat my son. You know what I mean? Well, they're the fights, I mean, and that's it. Let's get the fight on. I'm built up, I'm ready, I'm strong. I'm going to snap him in two, that's what I'm going to do. Big man, I'll speak to you after, Jeff. Simi has reached the rendezvous for the fight. Fucking hell, man. Huh? Waste of time, on it. Terrible right. waste. Everybody's standing around right. all morning and nothing come of it. But Simi will have to wait to defend the family honour, as his opponent has failed to turn up. Three yeah, months training, boys. The fuck off. Still, the day will come. We're not making up to be Mr. Motors or anything like that, but I think me and him, this man here, I think we would have done. I think we would have done. We would have snapped on any one of them today. Oh, we would have got smashed, one million percent. Listen, you can talk to talk, you can't do the walk. I said this a couple of days ago, shots. Look, game's over. Yeah, if they want to do anything, let them get oh, Apple Bay in the next few days. Let them sort it out now. Traveller culture, blood and honour often go hand in hand, but there is one Irish traveller who struggles to fit in with the macho ideal. I can't give in a blowjob in a tire, it's then at the bounce stop. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> Gay traveller Mikey is from one of the largest traveller families in Britain. So before you come out, what, what was your life like? See, double life. Um, you had to be dead macho. Bare knuckle fighting and stuff like that. It's just what they've been brought up in, how they've been brought up to be like men, <laughs> isn't it? So I would like try and be like one of the lads, but then didn't, obviously it didn't work. I come out of queer. I talked to my mummy, like, but she just said, make sure that it's not a phase that you're going through. And then her my daddy in the background saying, if he's 
tell him don't come near this house and blah, blah. And that, that hurt because um, I actually cried then. Although living not far from the site he grew up on, going public with his sexuality has forced Mikey to become an outsider. Do you like traditional traveller food? Yeah, I love spuds and cabbage and bacon. That's my, fa that's my favourite. Oh, my granddaddy's coddle. That's really nice. Which one of you are washing up? <laughs> Why was it such a shock then when you came out? Because I'm the first one out in the community, so that's why it was a shock, because I was brave enough to come out. But why do you think that more gay travellers don't come out? I fear that they'll, they'll lose their family, they'll lose everything, or they'll, they'll just get back, like, bet, basically, and battered and probably end up in hospital. That's what it is, just it's scared, more scared of losing everyone. <laughs> Over in Ireland, bride-to-be Priscilla has returned from Poland after her second breast enlargement. What cut side have you gone up to now? I don't even actually know. I, be, I didn't even get the chance to even go into um, a proper place to get measured. I just literally go in and look for the biggest bra in the shop. <laughs> so that is probably telling me I'm just bigger than everyone else. Because <laughs> when they see the bras, they'd be like, that's like two top of headlights of a car. So I can't fit into my other one, put it that way. <laughs> Tonight, with three weeks to go before her wedding date, Priscilla is having her hen party. And unlike many traveller men, non-traveller Clive is happy to stay in and babysit. When women goes out, the men to be always with them. But the men will be literally either drooling at the women going out the door or literally ringing their phone off the hook. You probably see this all night. Phone, phone, phone. Um, where are you? Who are you talking to? What are you doing all night? The girls have arrived, ready to party, and there's one person they can't wait to see. This is the first time they're after seeing me. Stand here with the surgery done. Turn around, Vicky. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Show me your shoes. You got your shoes. Yeah. Look after me, Look after me, Look after me, Look after me, when I look in the mirror, I know my stomach is not the same it was, but I just feel like it was. Now. Do you know what I mean? So I still feel like I look the way I did before I had it done. No, I just have to have all your stretch marks. Everything looks gone. really smooth. It's toned, like it's mm. not just mm. flat. It's toned. Mm. It's hungry as well. Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to get sick now. Could I have you? Cover it up, could you? <laughs> have a net for the week. See you in the toilet. getting excited, he can't even talk properly. <laughs> you poor man! <laughs> While Priscilla and the girls dance into the early hours, husband-to-be Clive is in for a quieter night. How do you think Priscilla looks? Oh, she looks beautiful. The nicest I've ever seen her in a long time. So I can only imagine what she's going to look like in her wedding dress. Oh. He's asleep. Since coming out as gay three years ago, Irish traveller Mikey has managed to rebuild relations with his dad and now sees his family regularly, especially his two sisters, Lizzie and Anne-Marie. That is absolutely lovely. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I don't like a lampshade. No, I don't like it. <laughs> mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Best part of having a gay brother. I know what, what looks nice and what doesn't. Mikey's sisters fully respect his decision to come out. It obviously, it's hard, especially with our background. It's very hard to come out. Yeah, you've got to have some guts to come out. We're being a traveller, but fair play to you. If you don't, I don't see why. Right, what's the problem in it? And there's more than one person who's gay in the world. Do you know what I mean? They've got to accept that. Do you think it would be different for one of you two to come out if you, if you were gay? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. It would be a completely different story. Why? Yeah. 
Why? I don't know. It's just different because obviously he, he's a boy and we're girls. Like everything's different in the way of boys and girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? I boys get away with it. <laughs> but no. In that way, it doesn't really. No ways. I, I wouldn't come at me. I probably would live a line. I'm not being a hypocrite there, but I probably would. Not that I am. I, never, I don't think I could no. ever be a lesbian in my life. No, I couldn't either. Today, Mikey and his sisters will be attending a festival not usually on the traveller's social calendar, Manchester's Gay Pride. Do you still feel part of the travelling community, though? Well, I always be. semi blood, isn't it? Basically, semi blood. All, all because I'm gay, does that mean that I'm not any different? So I've been in my blood, born in a trailer, lived in a trailer for quite many years. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Or we likes big dicky or what, anything. They can call me what they want. What else can they call me? I'm gay. It's not like I'm a or something. It's I, I, just that I like lads, not girls. I'm happy that I can be who I am instead of living alike. I come out because I didn't want to make myself miserable marrying a girl. I didn't want to make a girl miserable knowing that I'm going out cheating on her with lads. And I was willing to give up my family to be happy, and but I didn't. Luckily, that I didn't have to. With mum and father accepting me, but so fuck what anybody thinks, really. To be honest with you. Bad idea and a lot of bad luck, you know what I mean? No. And I just, honest to God, I'm not just saying it. I'm glad to see the share of number. It's been six months since Paddy was involved in a street fight with a rival family, in which both he and his opponent were eventually found guilty of a fray. Honest to God, half the travellers are not travellers now, you know. They don't know what they are. Anyone wants to fight a man 30 odd year older than himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's not a man. He's an asshole. Hoping to put the past year of violence behind him, Paddy and his wife Roseanne are throwing a big New Year's Eve party. There's an old saying, what Traveller says, let all the bad luck go with it. I'll start the first of a new year. New year, new life. In it, my darling, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> I don't know how things are, eh? Hi, buddy. Hey, not too bad, my man. Lovely to see you. Yeah, you mate, and you? Not too bad. I, I came for a suit for the, for the new year. So I'll give you that one, that one, or that one. There's all the new ones. Yeah. Well, that's better now, isn't it? Yeah. And let the new year come in with, with warmth, with your heart. You know what I mean? Now, uh, to have it with your woman, and, it's a gift, you know, to have with your wife, it's everything. And please God, with no violence, it's better again. Because she was like a good woman, isn't it? It's got to fit you lovely, you feel comfortable, you feel good. You're like 007. <laughs> it's right, isn't it? Thanks very much, yeah? Right. Good luck here, yeah? After 13 years as the high-profile boss of a tough site in Salford, Paddy wants to leave the violence behind him and has recently moved to Queen's Ferry, North Wales. I'm moving on there, just at peace now. No trouble, no nothing. You get young boys, 20 years of age, 24, 23s, 25s. I'm mad to fight you. I'm too old for it now. I don't want it no more now, you know what I mean? My wife wanted to come out here two years ago. Because my woman loves somewhere quiet. She loves that. She's a quiet woman, see you? <laughs> she wasn't there when they married her. Huh? 
passing on the mantle of protecting the family name, Paddy has moved his entire chalet to a site where his son, Simi Doherty, is in charge. What happens from basically SD forward is my business. My father, he's an old man now, isn't he? So if there's any problems got to come through, let him come to me first. We will not let no one come in and basically think they can act like excuse the language like, but it don't work like that. You've got to pass by my door first before you start doing anything like that. And it is my place, you understand? And there's no man going to come in and think that he can just get away with this and get away with that, because it's not going to happen. What are you wearing? I bought two suits and I'm sure you. I'm a pure sauce. What do you reckon, mate? It's nice. Without shirt, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. That's how about the Zen shirt. It's lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. You step all shammied up like he says. And then I have to say, woman, come to daddy. <laughs> come to daddy, come to daddy. Show him what you love me. Give me a hug, give me a hug, give me a hug. <laughs> give me a hug, woman. <laughs> I can't do any more than leave the place where the trouble was. Do you know what I mean? Can't do any more than that, can you? Things can escalate and get out of control. Where at one time, it would never have got that way because people were constantly, constantly in touch all the time. People who move away from the travellers' traditions, um, that's when things start to go wrong in, in the travellers' people's lives. Please, my God. But sometimes traveller traditions can be stretched to breaking point. Three months after her hen party, Priscilla has called off her wedding. After a series of rows, she's left Clive and moved into a hotel. Me and him has finished um, our relationship. It was always arguing and fighting and disputing and constantly him temporising around the house and it's a tragedy how, how everything can just start from the happiest days of my life from being with him um, and having a family. Leave that up. Kieran, no, leave it down. Leave it. I always thought that I would grow old with Clive and the two of us would carry each other's walking sticks and put each other's hands around our arms, but... Sometimes I'd, I'd rather be in a cargo box being happy instead of me being in a relationship that I'm not happy in. <laughs> Mommy hopes you wake up and have loads of hair so you won't look like your daddy anymore. Hey, so I won't have to look at him. <laughs> now, good girl. Despite her wedding plans falling apart, divorcee and mother of four Priscilla remains defiant when it comes to going against convention. I don't have to marry him because of shame of having kids or shame of just being a traveller. I don't want to say I, I, I'm married now, just declare a name or to say that I'm his woman or anything. The only thing that makes going to make me happy is my kids because I don't want to be with someone just for the sake of shame. Over in Queen's Ferry, Paddy and Roseanne are celebrating a new year and a new life. I realize your eyes Since we moved to Queen's Ferry, it's like a big weight has been lifted off me. And now I don't see everyone as my enemy. I see people for what they are now. Before I used to see everyone as an enemy, reserved, frightened. I'm not anymore. I feel so liberated. <laughs> I knew me. I thank God for that. Welcome to 2012. And we live for another 50 years together or something. I want too much in life, but I do want that. <laughs> I want 50 years, so by that time, we'll be 102. everybody and it may be the best one you ever had and I hope for me as well. <laughs> There's not enough 
hippies to save our lives. Next time, we explore what the future holds for gypsies and travelers. This is like Dale Farm with houses. As their struggle for a place in the modern world intensifies. It's not our culture and we'll never accept them, never. Ah!